prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is mentioned in various world religious scriptures, including the Christian scriptures. If you read in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, it says that I shall raise thee up a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall speak all that I command him. In fact, if you analyze this prophecy of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, befits no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now many people will say that the prophecy in Deuteronomy chapter 18 refers to Muhammad, but this simply is not possible. Let's read the prophecy to see what it says. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brethren. Now, this verse is saying that the Lord God will raise up for you, the Israelites, a prophet like me, Moses, from among your own brethren, the Israelites. It's not possible that this can apply to Muhammad for two reasons. One, the verse says, for you. A verse is being read to Israelites. This prophecy is being made to the Israelites. Therefore, Muhammad can't possibly qualify as a prophet who will come to them. He doesn't. He comes to the Ishmaelites in a land far away, in a place far away, in a language that's entirely different to a people that are entirely different many hundreds of years later. It is not this people. So it can't fit the part that says, for you. And nor does Muhammad fit the part that says, from among your own brethren. You see, the term your own brethren applies to other Israelites. It doesn't apply to Ishmaelites. It doesn't apply to anyone else. That's what the term your brethren meant when speaking to Israelites. And we can know this because a few verses before, the very same word is used and defined as Israelites. It says in verse 15, Be sure to appoint over you the king the Lord your God chooses. He must be from among your own brethren. Do not place a foreigner over you, one who is not a brother Israelite. So very clearly it defines brethren as brother Israelites. And this is how it's always used in the Bible. And so, to say that Muhammad qualifies as the prophet for Deuteronomy 18 clearly contradicts the wording, for you and from among your brethren. Therefore, Muhammad cannot be the man prophesied in Deuteronomy 18. There's a further prophecy mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 12, verse number 29, that the book shall be given to a person who is not learned. And when he'll be asked, pray, read this, he will say, I am not learned. And so, Muslims such as Dr. Zakir Naik will say that this applies to Muhammad because in Ghada Hira, the angel came to Muhammad and said, read, and he says, I cannot read, or I don't know how to read. Therefore, this is a clear prophecy of when Muhammad is going to come. Well, all anyone has to do is read the context of this verse. This is not a prophecy of any sort. No one is saying anything about the coming of a prophet here. In verse 11, it starts, For you, this whole vision is nothing but words sealed in a scroll. And if you give the scroll to someone who can read and say to him, Read this, please, he will answer, I can't, it is sealed. Or if you give the scroll to someone who cannot read and say, Read this, please, he will answer, I don't know how to read. This is simply a description of the way the world is. And in fact, it includes those who can read and cannot read. It says, if you give a scroll that is sealed to someone who can read, he will say, I can't, it is sealed. And it says, if you give a scroll to someone who cannot read, he says, I can't read it because I don't know how to read. In other words, this statement is talking about people being unwilling to follow the word of God. And it applies to everyone, those who can and those who can't read. Simply saying that this refers to the coming of Muhammad is taking it entirely out of context and wrenching the word of God to say something it does not say. The mention in the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16, it says, His mouth is more sweet, is altogether lovely. If you analyze, Hikkuma mitakim, we kulli Muhammadim. Muhammad added with him, peace be upon him, Muhammadim. So actually even his name is mentioned in the original manuscript. But in translation they translated, his mouth is more sweet, he's altogether lovely. Muhammadim they translated as altogether lovely. Now, Zakir Naik is taking many things out of context and using improper translations to come up with his point of view here. In fact, when we look at the word here, uh, in the actual context of the Bible, it says in Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, His mouth is sweetness itself. He is altogether lovely. This is my lover. This is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. 
You see, when you give the whole context, this doesn't even talk about the coming of a prophet. It doesn't talk about the coming of Muhammad. It, far from it, it's talking about a relationship between a woman and a man. And Muhammad finds no place here. And then you see what Zakir Naik has done is he's taken a word, lovely, and replaced it with the sounds that that word makes in Hebrew, and saying that it's Muhammad. But Muhammad wouldn't even fit there. The word that needs to be there is an adjective, uh, uh, lovely. Uh, it does not fit to have a noun there in this case. So Zakir Naik is taking this whole section out of context. It's not a prophecy. It's a, it's a verse of relationship between a man and a wife. He's taking a, a place where it should be an adjective, and he's putting in a noun. He's making one mistake after another to try to put this verse uh, into a context of a prophecy when it simply is not a prophecy of Muhammad. It mentions the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 34. When my father sends the comforter, he shall glorify me. Look at John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 18. It says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. If you look at the context of this chapter, we'll see that there's no possible way this is referring to anything but the Holy Spirit. It says, The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. Now clearly the people of the world know Muhammad and have seen Muhammad. Muhammad was a man who they could see. Whereas the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, is not seen by the world and not known by the world. But then the verse continues, You know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Notice, even at this time, Jesus' disciples are being told that this comforter, this spirit of truth, is known to them because he is with them and he will live in them. Muhammad can't possibly fit this. Because you see, Muhammad wasn't known to them. And he wasn't with them. And he certainly can't be in them. And so it is not possible for Muhammad to be the spirit of truth, this counselor, this comforter of John chapter 14. So we've seen these alleged prophecies of Muhammad in the Bible. And when we compare them to the prophecies about the coming of Jesus, it's like night and day. The prophecies of the coming of Jesus are so clear that there's no question about what is being said. Let's look, for example, in Isaiah chapter 53 and just read the verses. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We are all like sheep, having gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sins of many, and he made intercession for the transgressors. So we can see that this is clearly talking about a man who is cursed for the sake of many, who would take the sins upon his own shoulders, who would suffer, and who would be rejected and despised by men. This is a clear, clear prophecy about the coming of Jesus. And it's talking about a coming of a man. Compare that to the various prophecies about Muhammad in the Bible, which simply aren't prophecies. It says that he was going to be a brethren to the Israelites, yet Muhammad was not. In Isaiah, the prophecy, the alleged prophecy, doesn't even talk about the coming of a man. And same with Song of Solomon's. And in, in the book of John, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Whereas here, it's clearly talking about a man who will be suffering for our inequities and carrying our sins. It's talking about Jesus in the clearest terms imaginable. There is a big difference between prophecies in the Bible about Jesus and alleged prophecies about Muhammad.